it. Thank goodness I'm in such good shape, I guess. I, that was an unbelievable environment, uh, football game, two really good, well-coached teams. Uh, I got a ton of respect for Coach Vegan. I know his ties to, to NDSU run deep and, and a lot of family back in the state. But, um, you know, our kids, it was 28-21. They had a, there, was a, there was an opportunity right there to fold and, and, and pat themselves on the back and say, nice year. And, you know, maybe, hey, well, next year, let's, let's get it cranked up again. And just the resolve, the energy on the sideline was, was contagious. Um, we knew that they were going to run the football. They did a great job. I mean, that, that's, that's who they are. And, you know, we tried to defend them a little bit like an option team. Uh, I thought we did a decent job on third down. We got off the field. Uh, we held them, you know, without kicking those field goals early, just finding ways to, to make positive things happen, which was extremely beneficial as the game unfolded. But, you know, I'm not going to take anything away from our opponent. They're, they're a really good football team, and uh, it was an awesome atmosphere. And uh, Coach Vegan and, and his crew have a lot to be proud of. You just said on TV, Matt, that was the first time you ran that. Yep, yeah, that block. Explain what. Well, we just, we just had some different personnel in there. We tried to get longer. Um, had seen some things on film. That, that you know tendencies you have a whole year you have 11 games to watch you start dissecting everything trying to find an advantage especially when you're on the road and we put in our tallest player um hunter Pontius, who's about six seven 310 pounds and uh, worked with him all week uh and and just say you're a road grader one two three throw your hands up and he did exactly what we talked about all week and great surge by uh, our other D tackles trying to you know dent the front and give him a little bit of a uh, knockback, but wow, you know. So so he doesn't he doesn't normally play out. That's the first time we've ever used it. First time he's ever been. In. First time we've ever used it. <coughs> we've practiced it. The first time we've ever used it in a game. He's a former hockey player. Did you know he had that kind of pops? Oh, I did. Well, I recruited him yeah. on skates. He's like seven four. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a. Uh, I mean, what a what an opportunity. You talk about a guy stepping up and. And, you know, during his, his opportunity, his one opportunity today, and he made the most out of it. And, you know, we call it the Viking block because he's from Minnesota. And so we had to do the, the skull chant in the locker room quick for him. It was right at the end of uh, regulation, the two plat tackles by Cava and Hendricks. How huge that was. Especially great, yeah, player. great. Got, got him out of field goal range. Uh, you know, that's what I was, you know, they had the ball down 30-ish, inside 30, 35 yard line. All of a sudden, two back-to-back -back sacks, great pressure on the quarterback. And, and we got him out of field goal range and, you know, forced him to punt. And I wish we'd have, I wish we'd have caught that punt so we had it on the five versus being on the on the half-inch line. But, you know, it all worked out in the end. TK and T-Mac both getting involved in the running game. Uh, they, they did a really good job against your quarterback. They did. But then seeing them get back involved, kind of, yep. your thoughts on their – Yeah, they, they played a bunch of man coverage, dropped that safety, that, that post safety down to about eight yards and said he's just going to stay inside out on the quarterback. and. Uh, but we did get our, our tailbacks going today, and that was a that, that's a good sign. Uh, you, you need to at this time of the year take care of or take advantage of all your weapons. And I thought T Mac ran about as hard as he had all year, and, and he runs hard. And but great balance and bouncing off people, uh, and you know just huge run right there coming out of the gates at halftime. And then you know TK's run where he kind of popped it outside. I think it was inside zone, bounced it a little bit. They lost their edge and then got downhill on that touchdown that, that tied it. What does it say about this group of guys to survive a game like this in an environment like They want to keep playing together. That's what it says. You mentioned just the way you guys were able to attack the edge. When you guys were bouncing out, what were you seeing there and how important? Well, I think it, just man coverage. And so, and their two DNs are really good. Uh, I don't have their, their number 10 and number 11, but if we could get leverage on them, we felt like that we could we could run away from them. That post player hung on the quarterback so much that there wasn't, a, there wasn't that long alley player anymore. And so we were able to take advantage of some run game. Uh, and then we got them into some quarter stuff later where they all of a sudden they started playing a little more 4-2 box and, 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 and we took advantage of it as well. You feel like you just needed one stop, whether it was going to be an extra point block to win this yeah, game? Yeah, something like that. I just had to keep fighting. Um, wasn't pretty. Yeah, last touchdown, you know, we got to be better than that. We got to make them at least fight for it and earn it a little bit. But there's a lot of positives that came out of this. And um, the biggest one is we get to play together for another week. Strategy: If you won the toss in overtime, did you want like for? We're gonna play defense. Going We're gonna play defense. Yeah, it changes a little bit from probably what our yeah, early uh, coin toss strategy is. So comment on Tommy Mallott. You guys had obviously had trouble with him before. Yeah, yeah, us and everyone else in the country. So um, he's a great player. I mean, 
I thought we did as good a job early in the first half on him as, and I know he had that big one in the, in the third quarter, but I, I, I thought we, we got to him, we hit him as well as probably, you know, I know in, in games that they lost, they struggled to run the ball a little bit. They couldn't get their quarterback run game going, and we tried to emulate some things that we saw some other people take advantage of. I know you've won a lot of big games at, at NDSU. Some of them have been in Frisco, some have been in Fargo. This, yep. is, a, this is a whole different deal. When, it is. It is. Uh, probably won't sink in until we're on the plane <clears throat> and get a chance just to sit back and kind of collect my thoughts a little bit and put some notes uh, on my iPad. Uh, but. I'm super excited. Like I said, I'm I'm, a, I'm thrilled for the 64 guys that traveled with us and the 50 that are back in Fargo, because uh, those guys are just as important as the ones that are here. Um, you know, our scout team and the guys who give us the look all week. Is this the kind of game you expected? Maybe not a block extra points or whatever. Yeah, but as much of a battle. Yeah, I mean, we just wanted to stay close and be in it late and give us a chance. Uh, you know, they're averaging 40 points, 300 yards. Just uh, how can we get a stop here or there? Um, you know, find ways to get in the end zone. We didn't want to kick field goals. We needed to score touchdowns. We got in the red zone. And, um, you know, they, they gave us fits. And, you know, I'll, I'll, Cam continues just to keep fighting, keep battling. Uh, we used both our quarterbacks, I thought, equally today at different times. And then, like you said, our, our, the guys up front, offensive line, did a tremendous job getting our, our tailback run game going. That spin by Cam, was that a design run call? What, what are the, the, touchdown, the touchdown, it was. Uh, yep, yeah, kind of a G follow there. Um, and, 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 you know, kick out, kick out, and try to duck it up quick inside. A quick hitter. You know, but you're just trying to get linebackers to, to hold for a second on the reverse out. A little bit kind of like a freeze option play. How did you feel like your first road experience in the playoffs in a long time? Uh, what was that like? What did you think about that well, idea? I'll tell you, it's a lot better than the last one, because the last one we got beat. So. Um, I mean, you, you, unbelievable atmosphere. Uh, the crowd was in it from, from the get go. Uh, I know it caused us some issues. We had a couple of false starts out there. And this is what college football is supposed to be about. Two programs that uh, I think have great respect for one another. I got great respect for what they do and how they do it. And, uh, and, and I, I know they're going to they're gonna come back even stronger than ever. But um, awesome day. Awesome day. And, and excited, like I said, for our team, one more chance to, to play together. How much was Reed Ryan on everybody's mind? Uh, quite a bit. Um, I appreciate you asking about that. Funeral was today. Uh, we had a uh, handful, half dozen guys that were there. Uh, we sent his, uh, we wear a yellow jersey occasionally, a Harvest Bowl jersey. We sent it with our guys to give to the parents. So it's been a hard fact. Just unique. Now, football is supposed to be fun. And all of a sudden, you have this moment, kind of reality check. Good time for one more question. Early thought on another shot at South Dakota now next week? Well, chance to go one and zero next week, right? Doesn't matter who we play; that's just the way it all unfolds. So we're looking forward to it, but we got to get back to Fargo and have a great week of practice. And um, I know Coach Nielsen will have his group ready to go too. I got, you know, I couldn't have more respect for anybody out there than Coach.